Hey guys, welcome to week six. During week six, we're going to be talking about three different gas laws, Boyle's gas law, Charles gas law, and Amonton's gas law. We're also going to be talking about atoms and the nucleus of the atom. So week six, gas laws and atoms, we're going to start with Boyle's. Our learning target for today, you'll be able to explain the gas law, Boyle's gas law specifically. Are you one of those people who can't resist popping bubbles of bubble wrap? As annoying as it might be to people around you, do you just love to squeeze those little plastic bubbles? Before the bubble pops, the air pressure inside the bubbles inflates them like tiny balloons. When you pop the bubbles, most of the air rushes out. What does popping bubble wrap have to do with science though? Good question, glad you asked. Actually, it demonstrates an important scientific law. It's called Boyle's Law. Like other laws in science, this law describes what happens under certain conditions. Boyle's Law is one of the three well-known gas laws which state the relationships among temperature, volume, and pressure of gases. According to Boyle's Law, if the temperature of a gas is held constant, then decreasing the volume of the gas increases its pressure and vice versa. That's what happens when you squeeze the bubbles of bubble wrap. You decrease the, bu the bubble's volume so the air pressure inside the bubble increases until they pop. Boyle's Law was named after Robert Boyle, an English scientist who discovered the relationship between gas volume and pressure. Boyle based the law on his own controlled experiments. He published his results along with detailed descriptions of his procedures and observations in the 1660s. These steps were unheard of in his day, mainly because of his careful research and the details he provided about it. Boyle has been called the father of modern chemistry. Imagine a container of gas molecules like this one. The container in this sketch has a lid that can be pushed up and down to shrink the volume of the gas inside. Notice what happens as the lid is lowered on the right hand side. The gas molecules crowd closer together because there's less space for them to occupy and they have nowhere else to go. Gas molecules have a lot of energy. They are always moving and bouncing off each other and anything else in their path. When gas molecules bump into things, they create pressure. Pressure is greater when gas molecules occupy a smaller space because the greater crowding results in more collisions. In other words, decreasing the volume of a gas increases its pressure. As the volume of gas in the container pictured gets smaller, the pressure of the gas molecules becomes greater. When two variables change in opposite directions like this, the variables have an inverse or upside down relationship. As you look at the picture on the left, by pulling up, we've increased the volume and we've decreased the pressure. Again, this is an inverse or upside down relationship. So I have a question for you. How would you show an upside down relationship on a graph? What I'd like you to do is pull out a piece of paper, and on that paper, I want you to sketch a graph to show what the relationship between gas and volume pressure might look like. Let's make the x-axis represent the volume, and the y-axis represent the pressure. Take a moment and go ahead and do that. You can pause the video at this time. Great, you're back. Did you draw the graph? Let's see how you did. Did your graph look something like this? Let's see why this is correct. Find the point on the line where the volume down here at the bottom is the smallest. When you find the point where the volume is the smallest, that is where the pressure is the greatest. A 
Oops, I was looking at the wrong side. So volume, where the volume is the smallest, this would be the smallest on this end, okay? Pressure is the greatest. Pressure is up here, okay? Smaller volume, greater pressure. Larger the volume, the less pressure there is. Okay, does everybody see that? That's where the pressure is the lowest. When you see a graph in this shape, it usually represents variables that have an inverse relationship, like gas volume and gas pressure. Why is it not a straight line though? Well, think about it. If you were to apply pressure to say a balloon, you were to squeeze that balloon. At first, it'd be pretty easy to squeeze, wouldn't it? There wouldn't be a lot of pressure. The volume's big, not a lot of pressure, but as you begin squeezing, adding and adding pressure to it, and the volume gets smaller and smaller, it gets harder and harder to do. So you get a curved line instead of just a straight line straight across. Great. Let's summarize. So in summary, Boyle's law states that if the temperature of a gas is held constant, so we're not gonna change the temperature at all, okay? Then by decreasing the volume of the gas, it increases the pressure. And the opposite is also true. Increasing the volume decreases the pressure of a gas. When gas molecules bump into things, it creates pressure. Pressure is greater when gas molecules occupy a smaller space because greater crowding results in more collisions. This explains why decreasing the volume of a gas increases its pressure. So how did we do? Are you able to explain Boyle's Law now? Take a second and say it out loud to yourself. What happens when we increase the pressure inside a container? What happens to volume? If pressure is increased, what happens to volume? The volume decreases. If we increase the volume, what happens to pressure? The pressure decreases. So if we increase one side, it's going to decrease the other. Pressure and volume, Boyle's Law. Tomorrow, we'll be talking about Charles' Law. So we'll see you there.